Hello, it's Ricardo and I'm playing Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous as a game is a very complex affair. I've been playing it for a few years now and I'm still learning. Not only has the new player got to look at controls, joysticks, keyboards, mouse, joystick controls, there's also what seems to be the insurmountable aspect of upgrading your ship and indeed choosing your ship. So with that in mind, I thought I'd put together a quick video on what new players can do to start in Elite Dangerous. What are you going to spend your hard-earned money on? Number 10. Straight in at number 10, we've got the SRV. Now the SRV is the Elite Dangerous all-terrain multi-purpose vehicle. Not only will it allow you to go trundling around different landscapes, but exploring abandoned outposts. Mining for rare materials so you can take them to an engineer to modify other components upon your ship. The Horizons customer or commander can do land-based missions and not only explore those strange new worlds and find out what's going on with Guardian ruins, Thargoid ruins and the such. The SRV I think is one of the most important tools any commander can have within the Elite Dangerous Network and really does open up the game. So if you haven't got Horizons, it's my advice, go out and get it. It can't be that expensive and it will open the game up tenfold. Number nine. Now I've got ninth place allocated to ships. Now starting off in that old Sidewinder, is going to be a hell of a bind and you want to try and trade and work your way up to getting a better ship. One of the best ships to go for really is going to be the Cobra Mark III which is one of the immediate goals that you should have and then from there on to ships like the Asp or a trading vessel. Steer clear of things like the Eagle, steer clear of things like the Adder and the Hauler but what you want to be looking at is to get yourself a nice meaty ship like the Python. The Python, in my opinion, is the best multi-role ship you can possibly get with an Elite Dangerous. It's got a load of module bays, it's got good power allocation, it can land at outposts, so small landing pads, as well as accommodate some of the larger missions. However, I run that and I also run an ASP. Now the ASP I find is another good multi-role, although it does look a bit like a dinner plate but it's pretty good for exploring. Number eight. I love fuel scoops. They give you the total freedom to go out and do whatever you want to do without sticking it to the man and buying your fuel from a space station or starport. Fuel scoops for the explorer are essential if you're going to go anywhere with a long jump range or a long journey, for example, to Colonia, anywhere outside the bubble. Get yourself a good fuel scoop Make sure it's at least A rated and you can scoop up as much fuel as you possibly can in the shortest period of time. But remember, you fly too close to that sun, you're going to get your wings burned. You're also going to need one to use the Neutron Super Highway and to gather up all that Neutron Star fuel. Number 7. Ship Power Core. Now the Power Core is the heart and soul of your ship. Without that Power Core, you can't do anything. You can't power any of the toys or gadgets you brought for your ship, or your weapons, or your engines. Now some players will target your power core in combat to try and disable your ship. Power cores or power plants are nuclear fusion reactors which supply the ships with energy. They are however not 100% efficient at converting fusion energy into electricity. So some energy is lost as waste heat and must be exhausted through radiation panels. The fusion process also produces helium in a highly energized plasma state. All very good. However, large power plants are able to produce more energy, whilst power plants with a higher rating are more efficient. Now you can also engineer your power plants with armored powered plants, low emissions power plants, and also overcharge power plants. It's number six, the Discovery Scanner. Now there's a whole galaxy out there of rare and wondrous planets 
to go and explore with the Advanced Discovery Scanner and Discovery Scanners. The Discovery Scanner is a unit that fits inside an internal compartment of your ship, which allows you to scan for unknown astronomical objects within a certain radius of your ship. This can be increased, however, with engineering. All vessels come with a basic Discovery Scanner fitted as standard, but there are three levels. The Basic Scanner, the Intermediate Scanner, and the Advanced Discovery Scanner. Now, the Advanced one has a system-wide range and you want to be aiming for that one. For you commanders who are intent on going out and exploring the galaxy, then having a scanner is essential. You will get cartographic data which you can trade in at the space stations to get you not only money, but also notoriety within the game of Elite Dangerous when you discover a planet, a system, a star, or whatever that nobody else has and get your name on the game. It's number five, and that's the docking computer. Now this really is one of the most handy devices in the game, but it's at number five for a particular reason, that you should be able to dock as it is. This is strictly for convenience in my honest opinion. The standard docking computer is a ship module that automates docking with a space station, surface station, if you've got horizons, or an outpost. The process can be slow, so it's not recommended for pilots who need to dock quickly, and please do not leave your ship unattended. So there's a warning attached to this, they're not perfect and may not work correctly at times, especially around planets that have got high gravity that I have found. Be careful, because that docking computer might outlast you, cause you to get blown up by station defences, or just plant you directly into the surface, so be warned. Number four is the power distributor. The power distributor takes power from the power plant and distributes it to the ship's three main onboard areas, that of systems, SIS, engines, ENG, and weapons, WEP. It also includes a capacitor bank for each of the three systems, plus a three-way recharge capability. Power distributors are rated by their energy storage capacity and their recharge rate. Very important to have one of these. You don't want all these big funky lasers on your ship and then it being discharged really quickly. You've got to have that capacitance within your power distributor. All distributors are capable of recharging the weapons considerably faster than what they do when they recharge the systems or the engines. So bear that in mind and make sure you go and get yourself a good one. Number three, shield boosters. Shield boosters are used to increase the integrity of a ship's shields, but also increase the time it takes to replenish the shields should they become depleted in combat or through collisions. It's a relatively easy addition to your ship to increase its endurance within battle. Equipping multiple shield boosters will see shield multipliers stack additively, this meaning two OA shield boosters will combine to provide a total multiplier of 1.4 to shield strength, but when in danger and they're depleted, turn them off to recharge your shields quicker. Number two, the kill warrant scanner. The thing that every bounty hunter needs to make more money from their kills. No matter what happens, you're gonna get into a scrape or two and you're gonna come into combat with other players or NPCs. If you're a bounty hunter, that's going to be by choice. If you're not and you get pulled out of frame shift, you're going to be getting attacked by somebody else or something else. Now the kill warrant scanner is a great little device that when you do get your kills and you defeat that player or NPC, you're going to get extra credits in the form of a bounty for it. So in my opinion, it's a worthwhile device fitting to your ship as standard as it would be to fit thrusters. Making those kills equals more money, not only in a rank towards elite. Number one, the right weapons. Choosing the right weapon can in fact be a minefield and there's no pun included there. Do you have fixed weapons? Do you have gimbaled weapons? Do you have multi cannons, beam weapons? They all have their pros, they all have their cons. With gimbaled weapons, it gives you more time to fly around and concentrate on what you're doing. The guns will move with your target. With fixed weapons, you have to be a better shot. 
multi-cannons and projectile weapons don't use as much heat, whereas beam weapons such as the pulse beam lasers, they are going to incur lots of heat and drain your weapon battery from your power distributor even quicker. It's my recommendation, and it's only my recommendation, that gimbaled weapons and a mixture between beam and projector weapons would be your aim. And this is why I find it much easier in player v player or any other form of space combat to wear those shields down, take the shields out completely with beam weapons. Once the beam weapons have eaten through the shields and their shields are decimated, get in there with your multi cannons or your projectile weapons while your beam lasers are recharging, okay, and the heat is dissipating, shred through their hull, destroy their ship. That's my opinion. Anyway, I've been Ricardo, and this has been my top 10 items to buy in Elite Dangerous for your ship. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I've had a lot of fun making it. Fly safe and check back for more videos. See you soon.